Welcome back. This video is going to show us how we can get a confidence interval for the variance. Before I do that, I think it might be um, a good idea to review how I've been getting a confidence interval for the mean. So let's go over to my, my, uh, my piece of paper here for a second. And um, just remember that everything hinges on us knowing what the sampling distribution of the mean looks like in order to get a confidence interval for the mean. We need to understand what is, it, what is its distribution. So we have a, a very important result that if we take the mean and, okay, we standardize it by subtracting, so x bar minus the mean, and then if I divide by the sample standard deviation over root n, so this is the uh, standard deviation, the sample standard deviation of, of, of x bar, or the standard error if you want, we know that this has a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Now, then what we do is we write out a very simple true statement. <laughs> so the true statement is this. Let's call this minus t alpha by 2. This is plus t alpha by 2. And I want to put 1 minus alpha fraction of the area between these two values. So really I have alpha by 2 in either tail. So now my true statement is this. 1 minus alpha, that area in the middle, is just going to be the probability that negative t alpha by 2 is less than this quantity. So x bar minus mu s over root n. And then I solve this thing um, but for having mu in the middle. Uh, so I, I multiply through by s over root n. I move the x bars over there. Um, and then I, I have an expression for the 95% confidence interval for a mean. So once we know this, finding the confidence interval is pretty straightforward. We just, we just use... Um, you know, write, write down a true statement and do a little bit of rearranging to get our confidence interval formula. So the same thing's going to be true if we want to find the confidence interval for, for a variance. Well, before I do that, let me remind you what the sample variance is. So I like to start out with what's called the total sums of squares often, which is let's just find out how far each x is from the sample mean squared. So that's called the total sums of squares. And if we divide the total sums of squares by n minus 1, you get the sample variance. So it's, it's basically the average square deviance from the mean, is the way I like to think about it. So what is the sampling distribution of s squared look like? So what you have to note is that this thing involves squared random variables. So when I compute this sum, there's a bunch of xi's that are squared, and, um, you know, this, this is even going to get worse. We have x bar is another random variable that involves a squared quantity. So whenever you have squared random variables and you're adding them up, this uh, chi-square distribution is going to be extremely useful to us. So if um, I, I, I'm not really going to give a lecture on the chi-square distribution, but you can uh, go to the Wikipedia page and learn all of the uh, you know, fundamental characteristics of this distribution. So what's, what's, um, what's you know, I, I'm, I'm going to note in passing that the definition of a chi-square distribution is it's a sum of z, so z being a standard normal distribution, squared. So if I add up a bunch of, of um, normal, standard normal distributions that I've squared, uh, I get a chi-square distribution. Now, one thing that you should note immediately from this is because I'm taking a, a, a z and squaring it, this can never be negative. Okay, so I, there's no way um, I can take a real number 
and square it and get our negative number. So the chi-square distribution has a range that is zero to infinity. So if we go back to the top, we get pictures of different chi-square distributions. So for example, if we have a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom, it looks like this yellow or gold curve. And what I hope you can kind of see, you know, picture a, a, a normal curve that I've squared. And so th this is what you're going to get you know, uh, from that. Now, if I add uh, two uh, independent standard normal random variables, then I get uh, this, this green curve. So it starts to, it's, it's very right skewed. If I go out to three, um, well, then it actually starts out low and goes high and then comes down and then, you know, four and so forth. What's going to happen, because I'm adding up a bunch of independent random variables that are not normal, they're squared normals, um, the central limit theorem is going to tell us that eventually, if you add up enough of these, it's going to start to look fairly normal. And so the chi-square distribution will... Um, Will we'll start to look normal with, with if you have a large uh, uh, number of these squared uh, standard normals that we're adding up. All right, so that's um, that's what the chi-square distribution looks like. Gives you just a little bit of background on it. We're not going to um, uh, say much more about that today. You're going to run into this chi-square distribution very often. In fact, it's used in the definition of the t-distribution. We won't cover the chi-square test of independence, but that's one of the most important tests for a cross-tab um, that uses the chi-square distribution. And um, the, these um, sum of squared um, random variables come up very often in, um, in, in the rest of statistics. So what we need is, a, is, is an important theorem. So this is a requires a more advanced probability theory than we have, but in a you know more advanced class you you would see a proof of this. So the um, the, the theorem is that a chi squared random variable is simply SST over sigma squared. Okay, so this is a chi squared distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom is SST divided by sigma squared. Or often you see this written as n minus 1 times s squared divided by sigma squared. All right, so now we know the sampling distribution of the variance, the sample variance. So we're going to do the same thing that I reminded you of with the sample mean. We're going to write out a true statement. So 1 minus alpha is, of course, um, Sandwiched between these, you know, these two um, quantiles of a chi-square distribution. So, I could write out what a um, uh, chi-square density looks like. I could find the um, lower percentile and the upper percentile. The area in the middle would have to equal one minus alpha. Then what we did with the sample mean was we re rearranged the terms so that the parameter of interest was in the middle. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to rearrange terms uh, so that sigma squared is now in the middle, and we end up with this expression. So this is going to be the lower bound of a confidence interval for the variance. This will be the upper bound for the confidence interval for the variance. So let's now go do a problem. So I've taken this right out of DeVore. Let's say that we have 18 preserved cores from some um, oil wet carbonate res reservoir, and um, we measure the amount of residual gas saturation after uh, injecting some solent uh, to, to uh, flood out the water. So here are the observations. And we're asked a couple things. So first off, we should look at the distribution and uh, make sure that it's plausible that it's from a normal population. So in order to use this formula, we need a normal distribution. So we ought to um, just uh, confirm that that's a plausible assumption before going forward. 
If it's not normal, we may want to do a transformation on it, but that's not going to be an issue here. Then we're asked to find a 98% confidence interval for the variance. Now, let's go over to R for a second. And I've, I've typed in the data. So I've, you'll see that we've, we've got 18 values just as the problem stated. And I, I'm going to generate a QQ plot with a line superimposed. And so this looks fairly normal. Um, no major departures from normality, so I'm not going to worry about normality. Box plot looks fairly normal. Histogram looks reasonably normal as well. So we're going to go ahead and compute the chi-square uh, you know, confidence interval for the variance. So I'm now going to use this formula that I derived. So we're going to take n minus 1, so this is going to be 18 minus 1, which is 17. Multiply that by the sample variance. Sample variance I, I can easily compute from my 18 observations. And then we're going to divide that by percentiles that I find from the chi-square table. So let's go do that. So we're going to take 17 times the sample variance, so the variance of x returns uh, s squared, and then um, we're going to use q, chi-square, to get the, in this case, the first percentile of a chi-square distribution. This will give us the 99th percentile. So from this, we end up with a confidence interval that extends from 36 to 190. So I thought it would be interesting for us to go see what this distribution looks like. So I went back to R, and I'm just going to generate a sequence of numbers between 0 and 40. And we're going to use the d chi-square function. So the d chi-square gives us the PDF of the chi-square. We're going to evaluate the PDF at each of my x's, um, and we're going to just tell it 17 degrees of freedom. So this is what the distribution looks like. You're going to see it's, it's starting to look a little bit normal, um, but it's maybe a little bit lopsided still. It's a little bit right skewed, not terribly right skewed, but, uh, but a little bit right skewed. Now, I'm going to go use the AB line command to put vertical line, so the V equals just says, give me a vertical line, at the first and the 99th percentiles. Okay, so this, th these are the values that we found. So the first percentile gives us the point where 1% of the area under this curve uh, is to the left here. This point is the, is the, is the value where 1% lies in this little uh, sliver. And then I have rigged it so that there's 98% of the area in the middle. And so having done this, it becomes pretty obvious that this is not exactly symmetrical yet. If I were to increase the sample size, then it would start to look a little bit more uh, normal, but, but this, this isn't. So anyway, these are the values that we're using when we compute this, uh, this confidence interval. And so if if we were to repeat the sampling procedure over and over, uh, drawing uh, 18 cores at a time, and uh, the um, uh, we, we think the true variance is somewhere in this window from 36 to 90. Okay, so that's um, that's it for computing confidence intervals for the variance.